Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that some people have told me that they've been auto unsubscribed from my channel. So if you are subscribed to my channel, please do check to see if you're still subscribed or if you have notifications turned on. Just double check to see if you still have notifications turned on because a lot of people have told me that they've been auto unsubscribed. Just a quick little disclaimer. Now let's get to the video. This is the story of Yeti Airlines Flight 691. On the 15th of January, 2023, the pilots of an ATR-72 tail number 9 November Alpha November Charlie of Yeti Airlines were having a busy morning. They were constantly shuttling the ATR-72 between the airports of Kathmandu and Bukhara. The thing about Flight 691 was that it had two captains on board. The pilot in the left-hand seat was being familiarized with the Bukhara airport. She was the pilot flying. The pilot in the right-hand seat was the pilot monitoring, who was the instructor. Now the thing is, the airport at Pokhara was quite new. The old airport was very small and now a new international airport had been built in the vicinity and the pilots were learning all the new procedures for the new airport. So with that, on that fateful day, they set off from Kathmandu in the ATR-72 with 68 passengers and 4 crew members on board. The plane took off and everything was normal and the weather was good. So good that they were in visual conditions all the way to their destination and nothing appeared to be in the wrong. As Flight 691 got closer to the airport of Pokhara, they got in touch with air traffic control, and Flight 691 was assigned runway 30 for the landing. Now, we don't know why, but later on in the flight, the pilots asked for that runway to be changed to runway 12. They had already landed on runway 30 earlier on in the day, and maybe they wanted to try something new and land on runway 30 so that the pilot flying could get some experience with both runways. We don't know why they made the change that they did. If you have any ideas as to why they made that change, let me know in the comments below. Then, at 10.51 a.m. local time, the plane was at 6,500 feet, and they joined the pattern for runway 12, just north of the runway. ATC at this point was able to visually identify the plane, and from their point, everything looked good. As Flight 691 flew the pattern, the pilot slowed the plane down and brought out the flaps to 15 degrees and 46 seconds later, they dropped the gear. They were getting this plane ready to land. In the cabin, people were excited about the landing, with many of them looking out the window, eager to capture a view of the city of Pokhara. At this point, the plane was just 721 feet off the ground, and they were on their downwind leg. The pilot flying called out, flaps 30, and then the pilot monitoring just replied with, flaps 30, continue descent. This is when the problem started to show up for flight 691. The propeller rotation speed for both engines started to fall, and then before you knew it, they were less than 25%. We don't know how low they actually went because the flight data recorder does not record values below 25%. At the same time, the torque being produced by the engines also fell to 0%. At 10.56 a.m. and 36 seconds, a solitary little chime was heard in the cockpit. This was the master caution chime, but the pilots were just wrapping up the before landing checklist, and at the time, they didn't really notice the warning. As they made the left turn to get on the base leg for the approach, that is, they were now flying at a 90 degree angle to the runway, they still needed one more final left turn to line up with the runway. Then, both engines went into flight idle mode. In the cockpit, the automated callout for 500 feet was made, and it was followed up with the sound of a click, meaning that someone in the cockpit silenced the master caution warning. The plane was then put into a left turn of 30 degrees. The pilot flying felt that something was wrong, so she asked the pilot monitoring, who was the more experienced pilot in this case, if the left turn should be continued. He asked her to keep turning. Once the turn was done, the pilot flying felt that things still were not right and asked the pilot monitoring if the approach should be continued. He didn't feel like it should be and asked the pilot flying to add more power. But this didn't fix the problem with Flight 691. On the ground, the controller cleared Flight 691 for the landing, but no reply came. In the cockpit, the pilots were starting to get concerned. The pilot exclaimed twice that there was no power coming from the engines. Within seconds, the throttles were advanced to full power, but strangely, nothing really changed. They were now at the point where they needed to make one final turn to line up with the runway, but things were unraveling in the cockpit. The pilot flying, who no longer knew what to do, handed control of the plane to her more experienced colleague, but he could do little as well. As soon as he got control of the plane, the stick shaker started to go off, meaning that the plane was dangerously close to a stall. Then, without warning, the plane banked to the left and fell out of the sky. 
In the cockpit, the automated voice countered down the altitude, and at 10.57 and 32 seconds, Flight 691 impacted the ground. None of the 72 people on board survived. The crash of Flight 691 presented some challenges to the people who were investigating it. Even though the ATR-72 is a relatively modern plane, and even though the crash did happen in 2023, the FDR, or the Flight Data Recorder, only recorded 187 parameters of the airplane. So they turned to the wreckage to find out what really happened to Yeti Flight 691. That's when the investigators made a shocking discovery. The props were feathered. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, you see, on propeller airplanes, the angle of the blades can be adjusted so that they take a bigger or smaller bite out of the air. The thing is, if you feathered the props all the way in, the blades of the engine would be producing absolutely no thrust. Feathering is very useful if you lose an engine, and then if you don't want that engine to produce a lot of thrust. If you fully feather the engine, that engine's just going to be there spinning around without producing a lot of thrust or drag. A win-win in that scenario. But if something was wrong with the engines, or if someone feathered the engines in flight, then that would seal the fate of the plane on approach. This is where the wreckage comes into the picture. The first thing that they looked at was the propeller hub. The markings on the hub showed that the engines were feathered all the way down. They then looked at the MFC, or the multifunction computer. The MFC has this module called the Byte, or the built-in test equipment. The AFU, a computer on board, can command auto-feather of the engines under certain conditions. The thing is, if an auto-feather is commanded, a record of that is kept by the computers. When the investigators looked at the Byte records, they found absolutely nothing, meaning that someone in the cockpit manually feathered the engines when the plane needed the thrust the most. Looking at the data, they saw that the feathering was done when the flaps 30 command was given, meaning that the pilot monitoring accidentally pulled the wrong lever, which was near the flap lever, robbing the plane of power. So how did an experienced pilot make such a simple mistake? Pulling the wrong lever is almost unheard of in the aviation industry. To answer this, they needed to dive into the final days of the pilots before they flew this approach. The pilots were both well rested. For example, the pilot flying, she had a pair of noise cancelling headphones, and the investigators are sure that she got a good night's sleep. The pilot monitoring also got a good night's sleep. Then, on the day of the flight, the pilot monitoring had to instruct the pilot flying, well, about flying. This new approach and this meant that the pilot monitoring did not get a whole lot of chances to do a lot of monitoring. So, the brand new approach and the high workload combined to create the perfect storm. This accident is still hard to believe because the levers for the flaps and the levers for the feathering of the propellers are two very different levers designed completely differently. The one for the flaps is a single lever, whereas the levers for the feathers are split up into two sections so that each engine can be feathered independently of the other. That being said, the propeller condition lever or the feather lever required the pilot to disengage a trigger at the bottom of the lever to be able to move the lever from its detent while the flap lever could be easily moved by lifting it out of its detent and then just moving it. On top of this, the levers were designed so that they would be very different to the touch. So, what could have saved Flight 691? Well, something very simple that could have saved the plane and its passengers was a cross-check that was supposed to have been carried out by the pilots. But due to the stress and the workload in the cockpit about landing on a new runway at a brand new airport, the pilots just forgot to do that. And with that, the pilot flying nor the pilot monitoring noticed that the props had been feathered, meaning that the plane had no thrust. The pilot flying even brought this up by telling the pilot monitoring that she had no thrust. Despite all of these hints, they weren't able to figure out what was happening to Flight 691. The last thing that partially contributed to the crash is the airport itself. As you know, this was a brand new airport and instrument landing procedures had not been developed yet. This meant that the airport was operating in visual rules, meaning that the pilots had to do some tight turns to get to the runway. Even when you did get to the final approach fix for the runway, you would be a bit lower than usual, meaning that you wouldn't have any time or altitude to recover from an upset. And that is what happened in this case. Once the mistake of feathering the props had been made, Flight 691 stood no chance. Ultimately, pulling the wrong lever took down a passenger airliner. 
If you want to watch another video about something that happened in Nepal, then the video about US Bangla Airlines Flight 211 will be interesting to you. It should be on your screen right now. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.